Hi everyone and welcome to Conspectives. Today's topic of discussion is sperm DNA fragmentation. I'm Dr. Keshav Malhotra and you can get in touch with me at metaembryology at gmail.com. Now we know that the sperm DNA is essential as far as fertilization is concerned. Now if, if the sperm is not delivering the correct complement of chromosomes to the egg, obviously fertilization is something which is going to get hampered and even embryonic development and later on implantation is something which is going to get compromised. In this lifetime, there are so many causes for sperm DNA damage. They can range right from lifestyle habits like smoking and alcoholism to high stress levels to poor diet, aging, cancer. Very common cause of sperm DNA damage is varicocele because the testicular temperature rises because of varicocele. Then pollution, toxins, radiations, some drugs or medications. Infections is again something which is very commonly seen. Uh, along with sperm DNA damage and most of these causes can actually be prevented or you can actually reduce the effect of most of these causes. The three mechanisms by which sperm DNA damage occurs are basically abnormal chromatin packing, reactive oxygen species and abortive apoptosis. So let's, let's try and understand all three of them. Now we know that during the spermatogenesis process there is compaction of the sperm DNA which is going to happen. This happens because of ubiquitinization or phosphorylation where most of these histone uh, proteins which are present are converted into proteins which are basically coil-like structures. Now, if this process is compromised, then the DNA within the sperm starts leaking out and this is one of the probable causes of sperm DNA damage. And all of those factors which are discussed early on can affect spermatogenesis and can affect this process as well. The second uh, mechanism, and this is again very very common, is the effect of reactive oxygen species on the sperm. Now we know that the reactive oxygen species which are present in semen in normal levels is essential for a lot of factors like sperm maturation like capacitation and hyperactivation like acrosomal reaction all of these things the reactive oxygen species do contribute in activating them but at abnormal levels it can actually start dissolving the sperm lipid bilayer membrane which is present and once that lipid membrane is dissolved or eventually the lipid membrane becomes permeable it goes in starts affecting the DNA, the DNA can start leaking out and these are again causes for uh, increasing the sperm DNA damage. The third thing basically does not increase the DNA damage levels as such but it, it's a process where abnormal DNA or sperm with an abnormal DNA uh, can escape uh, and enter into the ejaculate. Now this is known as abortive apoptosis. It was found out by a lot of researchers uh, and a lot of studies that quite a lot of sperms within the ejaculate were actually showing fast receptors within their membranes. Now fast as we know is a, is a marker for apoptosis and these studies actually tell us that these sperms which have been marked for apoptosis are actually escaping the macrophages and still coming into the ejaculate and they still have the potential to fertilize. So as such, is not increasing the amount of, or is not directly causing sperm DNA damage, but this is a process by which these sperms can escape and come into the ejaculate and thus the quantity of sperms which have an affected DNA actually increase in the ejaculate. Now, the oocyte does have a certain amount of repair capacity by which it can actually oh, repair the sperm DNA damage which exists. Now for this to happen the egg has to be healthy, the egg has to be from uh, has to be young. There, obviously there should not be any abnormal parameters within the egg. But as age advances or as you start getting patients who uh, especially when patients come for IVF something or the other is compromised and these eggs don't have the same kind of repair capacities as far as changing or altering the sperm DNA is concerned and thus these are the patients who are more prone to having uh, profound effects of sperm DNA damage. Now 
there are a lot of studies in literature which have actually mentioned the effect of sperm DNA right from fertilization to implantation and we now know that it does affect the fertilization rate it will increase the multinucleation rates within the embryo it will uh, cause an increased fragmentation post uh, eight cell stage that's when the paternal genome starts getting activated it can cause embryonic arrest at the eight cell stage so it will decrease the blastulation rates of uh, patients who are suffering from sperm DNA damage and even if you get good blastocysts, the chances of miscarriage rates or the chances of implantation failure are higher in such cases. So these are the uh, potential adverse effects of sperm DNA damage. There are a lot of ways to test for sperm DNA damage. The common ones are basically SCD, which is sperm chromatin dispersion assay. This is something which can be done in most laboratories. It's a staining test where you denaturize the DNA of the sperm, allow it to leak outside and then you stain that leak. So any sperm which is showing a halo, which I'm going to show in the next slide, is classified as a sperm with a normal DNA. The gold standard test here is SCSA, which is sperm chromatin structural assay and is something which is done with flow cytometry and this gives you the most accurate levels. Comet and tunnel are also fairly uh, accurate but uh, actually are expensive are mostly uh, utilized in research um, laboratories so this is what, what i was mentioning to you earlier this is an scd slide and the sperms which are actually showing that halo which so this this test is also known as the halo test the sperms which are actually showing that halo are the ones which are normal so what what you would do when you are assessing such a slide is that you will count all of these normal uh, sperms and keep it aside you will count the sperms which are which are not showing this halo so like this one like this one like the one here and divide it by or count at least 200 sperms in total so the number of fragmented sperms divided by the number of sperms that you've counted into 100 will give you a percentage of this fragmented sperm so the percentage of sperm DNA fragmentation within the sample so let's say I got 30 fragmented sperms out of 200 so it becomes 30 divided by 200 into 100 to give a percentage which can be, comes to about 15 percent and this falls in the normal category of sperm DNA fragmentation anything above 25 percent there are some studies which say that 25 percent is the cutoff there are some studies which say 30 percent is the cutoff so anything above this range is actually classified as abnormal and that's where you start treating the patient uh, for sperm DNA damage the treatment options that you can give to such a patient range from antioxidants to certain therapies within the laboratory itself to lifestyle modifications etc. And I, I will be discussing more about sperm DNA damage in the online series which I am producing for uh, clinicians as well as for beginner embryologists. So do uh, watch this space and I am going to be coming up with lectures which will talk about all of this. So uh, thank you so much for attending this. I hope uh, this was useful to you. And if you have any queries, shoot uh, those questions to me on my email ID, metaembryology at gmail.com and I'll be very happy to answer them. So looking, looking forward to seeing you at the next one. See ya.